Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer for Tuesday, the 27th of June. As always, we begin with our service of light, so I will light our candle. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. And we're going to be singing our hymn throughout the service, Eternal Ruler of the Ceaseless Round, and we will sing the first verse now. Eternal Ruler of the Ceaseless Round, of circling planets singing on their way, Guide of the nations from the night profound Into the glory of the perfect day Rule in our hearts that we may ever be Guided and strengthened and upheld by Thee and our psalm is Psalm 126, which we say together. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev, May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now we will sing the second verse of our hymn. We are of thee, the children of thy love, companions of thy well-beloved Son. Descend, O Holy Spirit, like a dove, into our hearts that we may be as one. As one with it, to whom we ever tend, as one with him, our pattern and our friend. Our Gospel is Matthew 21, 23 to 32, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work for the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
So here we have Jesus at odds once again with the chief priests and the elders of the people. Uh, Jesus wasn't brought up uh, within what they would consider the proper way to be a teacher and a rabbi. Um, so that they ask him, by what authority is he doing these things? Uh, Jesus, of course, the Son of God, um, anointed by the Holy Spirit, um, doing amazing ministry, healing, all sorts of things. And yet, because he didn't follow the same sort of route uh, to rabbihood, uh, and, and he's teaching way more than, than they're teaching, they have a problem with him. Um, and so they ask him this question, you know, uh, by what authority? And Jesus plays a little game with them uh, about John the Baptist. I think his point is, is that John the Baptist, full of grace, teaching the people, uh, bringing many, many people who were excluded, and of course they were excluded because of the rules of the temple authority, um, and he's bringing them in, growing gr the, the, the faith in so many ways. Um, but it isn't according to the rules of the Pharisees, and so they reject John, and then later reject Jesus. Um, you know, Jesus telling the story about the two sons is really saying, you know, the, the Pharisees and, and all the righteous people are saying, I go, sir, and yet they don't do the will of the Father. Whereas perhaps the tax collectors and the prostitutes, uh, maybe they haven't come by the same route, but they are actually following God's will. And I think it's really important for us to realize um, we, need to, we need to do both. We need to be like the two sons put together into one, to say, I go, sir, and then to follow through. Um, we can't just simply do our liturgy, uh, attend our liturgy, come on Sunday, and just follow things by rote. We have to do that, and we also have to uh, live the gospel message in our lives. So um, that's what I think the world is looking for, people who express their faith in their words, but also in their actions. Let us sing the next verse of our hymn. We would be one opposing all the wrong, one in our love of all things sweet and fair, one with a joy that breaketh into song, one with the grief that trembles into prayer, one in the power that makes thy children free, to, oh, to follow truth and thus to follow thee. And now let us uh, confess the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And in our prayers, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may depart this life in your faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of St. Luke and all your saints, and trusting one another, and all our life to Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for people who are the victim of violence and war around the world. There are many places in the world that are suffering because of this. There are many, many refugees. We pray for 
many people who are refugees because of conflicts in Africa, in the Middle East, in Asia. And we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray uh, for our ability to respond uh, in compassion to refugees wherever they are. And we pray, O oh Lord, that world leaders' hearts might be turned to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, and uh, we pray for those who are known to each one of us, our friends and family who are sick, those who we do not know. And we pray for members of the parish who are sick. And in our Anglican, in our cycle of prayer for the sick in the parish, we pray today for Jane Ross, Jane Gatke, Jeff Smith, Cheryl Clark, Keith Braithwaite, Jody Cocker, Corrine Newell, Marion Conlon, Vic Burden, and Gerald Taylor. Um, we also pray for um, those in hospital, for Kathleen Zoak, and um, we pray for those um, who are undergoing treatment. We pray for a successful treatment. And for all the sick, O oh Lord, we pray uh, for your healing touch, that they might have wholeness of being in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for 10 more households on our parish list. And if you're joining us from another parish, uh, please uh, pray for members of your community. Today, we pray for Gwen Murphy, for Andrew, Lorraine, and Heather Murty, for uh, Richard and Janet Nettleman, for Richard, Laura, and Trevor Newman, for Bob and Louise Neville, for Corrine Newell, for Wayne and Ala Newman, for Irma Noel, for Audrey Norris, and for Gord and Cheryl Norsworthy. We pray for each one, O oh Lord. Pray for their health and well-being. And we pray that uh, as we open up a bit from the pandemic that they will be kept safe, but we'll be able to enjoy more things together and, and have some time for recreation during this summer that is coming. We pray that they might be uh, deeply conscious of the fact that they are members of a parish that cares and prays for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray uh, in the Anglican cycle of prayer for a province and for two dioceses. Today we pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. We also pray for the Diocese of Lake Malawi in the Church of the Province of Central Africa and the Diocese of Northern Malawi in uh, Central Africa. We pray, O oh Lord, for their archbishop, uh, for their bishops, clergy, and people. We pray for them in the ministry that they are engaged in. We pray that they will be connected with your mission uh, in their place. We pray that they might be kept safe, and we pray that they might Rejoice knowing that the world is praying for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for another brother of the Society of St. John the Evangelist. Today we pray for Brother Keith Nelson. We give you thanks for him. We give you thanks for his many skills and gifts. We give you thanks for his wisdom, which he brings forth in his writing, his teaching and preaching. We pray for him in all that he is doing for the building of your kingdom. And uh, we pray that as he is supported by his brothers at SSJE, he might know he is supported in prayer by a wider community, including us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray our night prayer from the Anglican Church of New Zealand. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray, amen. And we pray our collect for this week. 
Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let us sing the last verse of our hymn. O oh, clothe us with thy heavenly armor, Lord. Thy trust is shield, thy sword of love divine. Our inspiration be thy constant word. We ask no victories that are not thine. Give us the shield of faith that we may be. Steadfast, attentive, firm in serving thee. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us in evening prayer tonight. I hope you'll also join us on Thursday. And of course, join us for our in-person worship and other uh, virtual services as well. Uh, Hope to see you, perhaps see you at an in-person worship service on Sunday mornings now, uh, following the 10 a.m. service. We're having lemonade on the lawn, so a uh, chance to get together with other parishioners outside um, where it's uh, you know pretty safe and uh, enjoy some refreshment together. So maybe I'll see you at one of those. Blessings to you and a good night's sleep.